Hello and welcome back to Happy Healthy Homo, the podcast for happy healthy homos. Yeah. You're looking is. very happy and healthy and homo. Am I? Yes. Thank you so much. Yeah. So are you. You're glowing with it. Glowing with homo. Glomo. 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 <laughs> <laughs> I actually haven't patted myself because normally I go very shiny. Am I shiny? I am. Do you mean as like I thought your personality is shining out? My face. I you got don't, beams of light. No, just, you don't look too bad. Because I do have some powder. Sometimes you do have a reflective down. forehead, yeah. I do. But you don't seem to have one. I mean, we'll see in the edit. Well, yeah, we'll see. I mean, uh, I should have pat myself down. Never mind. No, Welcome no. back. I'm Joel Wood. I'm Keegan Hurst. And we are boyfriends. People have. There's some people that have an issue with us calling each other boyfriends. Okay. Where someone was like, 17 year olds have boyfriends. Like, you, that he's your partner. And I'm like, Sometimes you're my partner and sometimes yeah. you're my boyfriend. I feel like online, I always refer to you as my boyfriend. If I'm talking about you in <laughs> real life, boyfriend. hashtag my boyfriend. If I'm talking about you in real life to someone or a stranger, if they're like, oh, like, are you with someone? I'd be, or if I'm like, oh, my partner, Keegan. Do you know what, though? I feel like uh, when someone says, oh, uh, I live with my partner, I automatically go, gay. gay. <laughs> yeah. um, so is it a bit of a cop out because you don't want to say, you don't want to go, well, I live with my boyfriend because there's no ambiguity with boyfriend. Yeah. So I'm always like, no, nah, that's my boyfriend. Yeah. I'm a homo. Yeah, homo bro. I'm a homo bro. No, it's true. I think it can be a bit of a cop out. But then I would, if I'm openly having a conversation about my partner, you, I would then drop in a he and yeah, because yeah. I'm not gonna. If I didn't, I've been in situations like at a barber's, for example. The barber's, you love I using do the barber example. Want, I don't want to. I don't want them to know I'm gay. Why? I get. I feel uncomfortable. I feel like that's some internalized homophobia that they've you need got to work scissors through. in their hands. <laughs> if they hate gays, they could stab me in the neck. I, I, that, mm. You know, I've got an overactive imagination. Yeah, I think there's something to work through there. <laughs> well, it was fine because I went to a gay barber. A garber. A garber when I was in London. Um, and now I'm trying to find a new barber. And the one I went to, where where we now live, where I now live, but with you, you've lived here a while. Anyway, up north. I went in. What and a strange they were way all... of wording that. <laughs> a preposterous man. Can you tell I'm a bit manic today? I feel like I'm, I'm, I haven't been diagnosed with anything, but maybe I'm, I go have an episode. <laughs> Um, Self-diagnosis. Yeah. Why don't you just give it a Google? That yeah. always works well. well. That's what I do. Yeah. Anyway, barbers I find are weird. Can anyone relate? Comment down below in if you're watching on YouTube. If you're listening to a podcast, you can't comment. You okay. can send us an email, though. You can review. You can review. Review, rate, and comment. Yeah. yeah you, send us an email. Yeah. Do that. Hello at happyhealthyhomo.com. And start it with, hiya. Hiya, <laughs> you're right. Hiya, <laughs> you're right. <laughs> Joel, since moving up north. Joe's noticed that all northern women greet each other with the phrase, Hiya. Hiya, you're right. You're right. It's so nasal as well. And and they don't even care about the answer. So you think that they're actually interested. And you answer them and they're just like, carry on doing the yeah. thing. And you're like, oh, you didn't actually. And now care. whenever, I, I can't unhear it now. Whenever <laughs> yeah. I hear someone say it, I catch his eye across the room. Yeah, that's great. Um, anyway, we're here to do a podcast. Anyway, sorry. Yeah, guys, this week we're talking about body image, body issues, health, fitness, your physical body, and the relationship you have to it. And the relationship that we as a community have with it, the mm. pedestal that we put it on, it's like a love, it feels like there's a lot of love-hate relationship with yeah. body and how it, how bodies are represented. Yeah, uh, and the hierarchy Yes, in the gay community. If yeah. you've got a good body, you are the top tier, Apparently you're the top of the you're, pyramid. You're worth Apparently. more. Well, yeah. yeah, which is obviously not true. No. Um, but so yeah. So where do we start with this big topic? I mean, you could start by, I'm sure everyone watching already knows, but with what you do for work, because that is, I feel, really relevant. Yeah, so I am uh, a coach. Uh, I have my coaching company, PTIQ, which <laughs> someone once asked me if it stands for personal trainer is queer, and <laughs> unfortunately it doesn't, but I wish it did. It just stands for PT, train, IQ, smart. Yeah. Train smart. Train smart. That was it. That was, that was, that was all there was to I it. Think it's very good. Anyway, um, because I, know I had trouble with, I was overweight as a kid. Mm -hmm. Obviously, I've played rugby. I became very aware that um, 
I've always been of the mind that your body is an instrument to be used. It's not an ornament to be mm. looked at. And usually if you use it in the right way, it'll look how you want it to look anyway. Yeah. Um, and so I never, I, I, I trained to play rugby. And then when I came out, I did an atti- a photo shoot for Attitude magazine, mm-hmm. which was which was great. It was a really good experience. It was really cool. And one of the photos, it was towards the end of the rugby season. So, you know, you're not training as much in the gym. You're just trying to, you know, get from one game to the next. And I, you know, I wasn't as lean as I, um, as I have been in the past, but I certainly wasn't out of shape. No. And I was there was a bit where I was in the shower and I was kind of lent against the wall. So anybody sat down, nobody, everybody's yeah. got a bit of something going on, yeah. haven't they? Uh, anyway, I was like lent against the wall, kind of half, uh, half crouched over. So there was there was a bit of a f- accumulation of body fat. Mm. Um, Literally minimal body fat. Yeah, not a lot at all. And someone had commented underneath saying, couldn't they have just airbrushed abs on him? Like as if... What an odd th- thing to say. Uh, but it, 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 of all the nice comments yeah. that has always stuck with me. I can't, I can't remember if I think it was a blank profile. So, yeah. I mean, it just goes to show. Mm. But, and then, and then I just became hyper aware that men are very good at objectifying mm. other human beings, whether they be yeah. men or women for straight men. Mm. Um, and, and just how important, you know, you could say something really profound and then they go, oh, you've got a nice ass. Yeah. Uh, and it just, and and so I was aware of that. I was also aware that I was the, I, I realized that I've had a good relationship with sport mm. and the gym and um, health and training in, in that sense. But I know that's not the case for a lot of other people. Mm. And I know because I went through, I had a good experience that I could pass that on because training is important. Moving your body well is important. Mm-hmm. Looking after yourself is important. Um, so I set that up. I set yeah. up PTIQ, which is aimed at gay men. Mm-hmm. It's a community. You know, we like what we're trying to build here. Guys who mm-hmm. want to improve their body, but also their mindset, their health, their energy, just their general lifestyle so that they yeah. can live with that authentic purpose because mm. there is nothing worse where how you feel about your body changes your behavior day to day yeah. whether it changes you reaching out to message someone because you mm. don't feel confident whether it changes the clothes that you exit doesn't quite fit how you'd like it mm. to or you don't want to be in that photo or you won't take your top off on that's yeah. horrible it's yeah. horrible to have your the decisions that you the things that you want to do dictated to by that you know we've all got that nagging voice but when it's something that you are in control of, mm. your health yeah. and your body, but your experience of training and the gym and and all that is a barrier mm. that can be removed. Yeah, and and that's what I I do at PTIQ. Yeah, so yeah, I I I I think that <laughs> there's so many issues with body image in the gay community, like that you've you know like you said the hierarchy of white mm-hmm. abs mm-hmm. you know, you know all, all, all that, and that's plastered across yeah media and stuff yeah um is that this is this is the standard and mm-hmm. if you do not adhere to this your worth as a human being or a member of this community is yeah. less mm-hmm. that's horrendous yeah for a community that talks about you're all welcome. Yeah. But only if you're beautiful. Yeah. Well, definitely. <laughs> it's, it's it's But I know I know some people watching this may if you're a bit cynical as well, you may listen to this and go, "Well, it's all right for you two to talk about this because you might go, "Oh, you're good looking, you're in shape, you go to the gym like." But I for me to I did a post yesterday on Instagram about that because I get that a lot from people that obviously I'm nowhere near the finished product and I, I'm working on my body as well as my mind and everything. But I've not always looked like I do now. Mm. I have struggled with my weight all my life, yo-yoing back and forth. I've been very overweight. I then uh, had bulimia and like lost a ton of weight. It was rakishly thin but from eating like binge eating junk food and and throwing it up Um, and then gained all the weight back again. Once I sort of had gotten through that, I gained all the weight back again. And 
And so I'm really proud of myself that for the last five years, I've managed to lose the weight, build some muscle and stay that way. Mm. I might have fluctuated a little bit back and forth, but I haven't gone back to where I was. But all of that to say, I can definitely relate to the struggles of someone who has been overweight or someone who's been underweight from both of those. Yeah. Again, not to the full extent. I'm sure there are people out there who are more overweight than I were or yeah, yeah. thinner than I was. It's all, it's, it's, it's all relative. Mm. It's, it's really, I mean, this is the thing that goes on. I mean, it goes on in society at large now, but that I'm, my life has been worse than yours. Yeah. So That's I'm, I'm a bit, I'm a better victim than you. Like, yeah. You know, every you, you don't know my experience. No. I don't know yours. You know, it's like when if someone who is, you know, more effeminate goes, oh, it's easy for you because you don't look or sound like I do. Mm. I'm very aware of what I look and sound like. Mm. Um, but that doesn't mean that my experience is, has been a, a cakewalk. No. Because it certainly hasn't. And, yeah, you know, I understand why people might say, well, it's easy for you to say that. You, because if someone like my body looks the way that it looks because of what I have done to it mm. is I've not I didn't, I didn't wake up one morning. I look like this. No. It's been, I've, I've been going to the gym mm. with varying degrees of success since I was 14 years yeah. old. And probably for the first 12 years of that, I didn't really do anything, mm. but I went because I knew it was a, a good thing. And it obviously helps with my training as well. with rugby yeah. and stuff. Mm. But my body looks like it does. And your body can look better than it does now. Mm. You can improve that. That is something that's in your control. Yeah. Like you absolutely have control over that. And that doesn't, you know, mean to say that you should know all the answers. No. It's like, if you want to fix your car, take it to a mechanic. Mm. You don't YouTube how to do it. No. People don't do that with their own bodies. It's because no. depri people deprioritize themselves. And, mm. and gay men in particular have spent their whole lives, not every, obviously I'm not everyone, but a lot of gay men have spent their whole lives trying to prove that they are worthy mm. of love and acceptance and because to be gay is to be less than or mm. has been in the past mm -hmm. and so we overachieve and mm. we try to and so there's a certain element of shame that i should know how to i should mm. have control of my body and i should know what to do with it and no one intrinsically knows what no. to do with it you know you don't get a manual with it no. um so first of all yes i accept that my body is in good shape but that's because mm -hmm. of what i do and also yeah. I've been a professional athlete. Yeah. Like it's really unrealistic for you to compare yourself to me mm. when you've not been a professional athlete. Of course yeah. you're not gonna look like me. Mm. It's like when you see someone on Instagram who's full of steroids yeah. and hasn't eaten for a week and he's awful and he's shivering and he's cold and mm. but you don't see that on Instagram no. and they don't talk about it, no. which is the perils of of Instagram. Yeah. It's um that's also not fair to compare yourself to that. Mm. And, and and I feel like that's what my job with the content that I put out in and around health and well-being is to kind of demystify that, is to yeah. take away the, the curtain that, mm -hmm. you know, the Wizard of Oz, the ooh, yeah. turn, pay no attention yeah. to the man behind the curtain. Because the, there is unfair and unrealistic expectations. Yeah. And also the thing of it's easy for you because you're good looking. Mm. Well, again, that's in the eye of the beholder and all that. Yeah. But... Yeah, I, I appreciate that people find me handsome. Like, mm. That doesn't mean that what I say is any less valid yeah. or more valid because mm. that's the case. Yeah. Like, I, I, and also this is exactly what these sorts of conversations, because we want to stop that from happening. Yeah. We want to stop someone feeling less than because they're not super in shape or because they don't deem themselves to be very attractive. Like that doesn't matter. Attractiveness shouldn't matter. And we know it does in the gay community, but the, the, this podcast is all about trying to shift the gay community, which some people say, that's too big a task, you can't do that. Yeah, but I, at least we're doing uh, something towards hopefully trying to go, your value is not dependent on what you look like. Yeah, abs and I think that's the thing. And we're not naive enough to say that it's obviously people there's a level of attraction to another person yeah there's that you've got to have that yeah so we're not saying that you know we live in this amazing world where no, no everybody no one is judged on how that of course people are judged yeah. on like uh, let we live in a real world where yeah. people are going to behave in a certain way and yeah how you you know people are going to be more attracted to some people and less attracted to other people mm -hmm. but what we i think what certainly 
I know we we always I always end up arguing with you don't and we say the same thing. Keegan, or I will say something that Keegan agrees with, and instead of going yeah and da 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 da, he'll go no but and then say exactly what I said, and I'm like, why are you phrasing it as if you're disagreeing with me? Because you're saying the same thing I am. Yeah, he just loves to disagree. Yeah, what what we're saying is that there are so many other metrics to measure yourself yeah. on. You, you, yes physical how handsome you are might be one it's like a top trumps card yeah like you've got but your top trumps card is it's yeah. this it's your health it's your 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 ability to have boundaries prioritize mm-hmm. yourself be a good communicator like there's so much more because yeah. i have i I'm, and i know you have as well i have been and met people who are incredibly yeah. beautiful to look yeah. at and most look of them like are God. I've got the person that that table's got more personality. Yeah, they're so bo- literally. I would not say all of them. Not all again. of them. There are people out there who have incredible body- bodies and very handsome, and they are fun. They're just very hard to find. Well, yeah, like unicorns. They're like yeah, they are they unicorns. They are unicorns. I yeah, and like well, you've just said it. I was just going to repeat it, but been on dates with people who are very attractive and chiseled bodies vapid boring so boring yeah oh so my it's gosh. like this this is the desirable thing and it's and it's not and we should you like i said your body is an ornament it's not an instrument yeah you should we should be health should be higher than beauty yeah you know mobility should be higher than how many abs you've got yeah you know because I can tell you, there's so many of these people who've you know hammered steroids or trained at such a high volume mm. that their joints are in they're in pain. Yeah. Their joints are awful. They've not eaten enough food. They've not had enough fat in their diets. Yeah. Uh, and the the picture that you see on Instagram mm. in their speedos yeah. that it covers a multitude. They, they, those speedos cover a multitude of sins. Yeah. <laughs> Well, it, the steroids is one of those things where I only really learned about it a couple of years ago where, like, I was like, oh, wait, so not every bod- every guy who has a good body on Instagram, they're not all just natural? Like, I, they take enhancing drugs to look like that? And people are like, yes, and there are certain telltale signs as well. But there's some of them, you can't tell. There's one we can't tell. And I can't really tell. Like, they, they would go, oh, look at their shoulders here and look at their this, look at their skin. And, like, I can't really tell. But it is now, I am very aware of it. If I see someone, you know, again, Instagram knows who the gays are. So you go on your Explore page, topless guys, even when you click not interested. Well, I mean, when someone goes from being r- really slim... Yeah. To packing on yeah. 15, 20 kilos of muscle. Yeah. It, it's just not possible. No. Not in such a short period of time. And that's really disheartening. As someone who is fairly, not, not new to the fitness journey, but like I've been doing this since about five and five and a half years that I've, since I started my journey. I can't form sentences today. Anyway, it's been five and a half years. I'm relatively new to it. And it's really disheartening when you go, oh, wait, so is it just impossible for me to have an aesthetic body, the aesthetic that I would like, naturally. So is that, and it's not. It's not impossible. It's not impossible. It's but it's about managing expectations. Exactly. You know the thing is, ev- anybody on the planet, if you got someone lean mm. and you put, f- you know, ten pounds, five kilos of muscle onto anybody, yeah. they'd look amazing. Yeah. Amazing. Mm. Anybody. That's all you'd need to do. Yeah. And realistically, you know, you should be looking to, again, just to debunk it all. Mm. If you were slim and you wanted to put weight on, you should be aiming to put on about um, 1% of your body weight per month. Yeah. So if you weigh 80 kilos, mm. you'd be looking to put on 0.8 kilos per month. Yeah. So ve- because build- there's a maximum limit, isn't because there? Because we'll build- build- we'll build- building muscle is just a very slow process. Yeah. You're literally building new tissue. Yeah. Losing body weight, losing fat, you'd say 1% per yeah. week. Mm-hmm. But uh, it's... So when you see someone go from that to Superman yeah. in six months, it's just not possible. No. And people are not open and honest about yeah. it like if you've taken steroids admit you've taken steroids yeah. i th- i took steroids yeah. after i um retired from rugby mm. and i thought what's the you know what's the what's mm. the thing on you know what's the go with it yeah and i took them and i i mean i put on so much weight mm. as in i was oh. i was yeah. big and i was strong mm. um and i could tr- but my mood was all over i yeah. i didn't i didn't 
I didn't like I didn't really like how I, yeah. I was with it and I came off it and um yeah I I I, I it didn't it didn't it didn't rock my world. No. Well, I don't but think, I understand why it would do. Yeah. And I get that people are now being slightly more open with it, guys. That on, I've seen it sometimes on Instagram in their bio. They will say that they, they take steroids. And that, that's enhanced. really good performance enhanced. Yeah. And that is really good that they do that. And it also doesn't take away from the hard work because you you don't just oh, pump yourself full of steroids no. and then suddenly you're big. Like you have to train hard. Otherwise yeah. you get fat. People who tra People who take steroids and are in good shape probably train harder than people because you want to yeah. get your money's worth well exactly because you're not going to be on it forever so it's not yeah. undermining it it's just saying it's just putting out the message of going but don't compare yourself to me as someone who doesn't use those performance enhancing drugs don't yeah. compare yourself to me because yeah, that's not fair. this is because i have like taken these drugs and that's the that's the whole point of why we're doing this podcast mm. is because we want to help offer alternative perspectives mm. so that people can make informed decisions yeah. and manage the a, a big thing with with human beings in general is mm. when you're living your expectations are up here mm -hmm. and your living standards as in how you're operating mm -hmm. are down here if they are not in line mm -hmm. then you this gap this is where you feel frustrated and disillusioned and what's the point yeah. why should i do it and and they might be in line with work relationships yeah money whatever but out of whack with one thing like your body yeah so sometimes yes it's a case of raising your standards and being mm. better to to reach your expectation mm. but sometimes if your expectation is actually unattainable yeah you're you, you need to lower that yeah to some level of sometimes it's a case of doing that yeah rather than Both doing at the same time yeah exactly yeah and and i think you know talking about mm. that and it is prevalent in uh, obviously because we are men who like men yeah you know we we and we do compare there's that thing in there of comparing yeah well, i don't look like that yeah so how they i don't look like him so how's he gonna find Definitely. me attractive well and i know some people might point out that they might view it as hypocrisy where it's like saying like you don't need to be ripped to be valuable and da, da, da. yeah at the same time like i'll be honest my goal is to shred body fat and to my, I've never been confident enough to take my top off like on a beach or like one. Well, I do do it on a beach, but if I was with a group of friends, I might not do that because I'm like, oh, I don't feel confident. Like if I'm in front of you or my family, I will because, lol, I'm, I don't just keep my my clothes on all the time around. Good night. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> but basically, especially online, one of my goals. It sounds so shallow, but I will admit it that I would love to be able to post a photo of me on Instagram just in swimming shorts or something with no top on because that to me is huge as someone who struggled with their body and body dysmorphia and bulimia and like just mm. gaining weight losing whatever i've never felt had a good relationship with my body so that to me sounds shallow to other people but i'm like i want to do that but i know that my current body is is good enough and yeah. it's valid and it, i love it and i'm learning to love it as it is just the fact that i want to improve it doesn't negate that like both oh, yeah. can be true at the same time exactly yeah two things can be true at the same time and also you know i'm sure you could post a picture on instagram now yeah and, and i and know some fine. people go oh my gosh you look amazing and but i wish i looked like that you, but I, I don't feel like that i feel you've also got to like even you saying that then and i say this to clients and people that i speak to all the time people always preface uh yeah. i want to I, I know this sounds vain yeah. i know this sounds shallow every I've always we always said at rugby look good feel good play good mm. you know people get you get a haircut before a game mm -hmm. your boots you got nice boots you feel you feel good you yeah. wear nice things you look good you feel yeah. good you perform well mm -hmm. and that's the same in every area of life yeah. sh sh show me a person sh sh show sh me sh show me a person where if you say to them do you want to feel sexier than you do now mm. who's gonna say, who is going to say no to that. No, no. If, no, thank you. I, I would. I don't want to feel any sexier than I do right now. Yeah. Everybody's going to say yeah, and there's mm. nothing wrong with wanting to feel sexy. Mm -hmm. There's nothing wrong with wanting to feel good. Now that doesn't mean that you need abs to feel sexy. No, absolutely not. That's not what's. But improving your body. I mean, we live in a world now where if you 
overwork yourself to death, you binge watch TV, you eat a load of processed food, uh, and you go out and you get on the piss every weekend and stick mm. loads of stuff up your nose, that's normal. Yeah. But if you eat a well-balanced diet, go to the gym, meal prep. look after yourself, meal prep, and you m- maybe put things in my fitness pal every so often, yeah. or you say no to a dessert every so often, yeah. you're obsessed. Yeah. Like, when did that, yeah. when did that happen? Well, I said the same to you last night, whereas I... Ate one of my favorite desserts is quark, which if you're American, you won't know. It's like a soft cheese, but high in protein, lower in calories. Um, and it's I like that for dessert. And someone was like, oh, he's got disordered eating. <laughs> I'm like, no, I have had disordered eating in the past. But well, that, that is not... person potentially has inhaled a pizza. Yeah, exactly. I'm like, wait, so... Yeah, not that eating a, a pizza's bad either. No, though. but I know what you mean. Like, you, you, you just eat what you want without thinking about the repercussions of it. And that's okay, but me trying to like manage my body in the same way that I manage my finances, well, and exactly, I my business, yeah. Pe- that's not okay. Pe- people, people say, you know, uh, you're obsessed because you you track what food you're eating, and I don't mean I don't track all the food that I eat, but I track a lot of it. But yeah. uh, you know, I if if someone said, "Oh, I can't go out this weekend. I'm saving up," you're obsessed. Yeah, you're obsessed, you're obsessed with, with money. money. You're obsessed. Oh, I, we've actually I've got rid of Netflix because I don't use it. Oh. Oh, are you, are you on a money diet? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. That's a good yeah. money diet. The money diet. The money diet, yeah. Mm. <laughs> no, but I know what you mean. And th- I feel like this is a big topic and we're actually coming to the end of this episode, which feels very short because I feel like we could talk about this a lot longer. Oh, I could go on about this all yeah. day. But let us know. Send us an email or DM us yeah, on, on Instagram, or ha- happy healthy homo, with specific things that you might like us to discuss or your thoughts and we or can questions sort of or questions. things that you want us to elaborate on yeah um i mean we've not really i suppose talking about the fix is yeah what's the fix to this i think it's just health focused mm. so I, something i always talk about is health focus rather than uh, performance focus rather than aesthetic performance yeah. health focus rather than you know some some vanity metrics yeah. you know can you move well are you mm. stronger um and that's good because naturally if you're if you're pursuing health the the physical like and the will be a byproduct the vein in inverted commas things are a byproduct will be a byproduct that. if you look at a crossfitter yeah they're in great shape mm. yeah because they train i mean obviously we're not all going to train like crossfitters mm. but it's you know it's a, it becomes a byproduct yeah think of your your body as an instrument as an rather than an ornament and i think you know we also have a responsibility with the stuff that we consume. Mm. You know, it's all well and good saying uh, media outlets should uh, give other models a chance that don't necessarily are shredded to death. Yeah. And they absolutely should do that. Mm. 100% we should see different yeah, body course. shapes, sizes, colours on our yeah. screens and media that we consume. But also, if you see that and then you just go back to the one with the abs yeah and you're not giving the other guy you know the other model then of course those companies are going to go this doesn't get any traction we live in a world where Mm. it's a business yeah and this goes further so it's we have a responsibility we can't sit here going they don't um provide enough variation and yeah. then when they do provide the variation go oh no yeah. i don't want to watch that we're saying with youtube where i get some people going i hate this type of video like stop making it like why do you insist on doing this and i'm like these are my most popular videos like the reason i'm doing it is because you you are sat there watching it now and leaving a mean comment because yeah. these are the ones that get the views if you don't like it don't watch it and then yeah. i'll stop making it yeah we we i think it's really easy for us all to go it's somebody else's job yeah. And it's not. It's, yeah. uh, never underestimate the impact that you can have. Yeah, um, definitely. You got the power. Hashtag democracy. <laughs> <laughs> well, let's wrap this episode up there. Thank you guys for listening, for watching, yeah, for being with us. Review, comment, to share it. Yeah, subscribe. Subscribe. Do, do all, all the, the all the social media things yeah. and spread spread the word. We we we. If you if this has impacted you, it's helped you. It's changed the perspective it's, there's been a little bit of a shift or it's just mm. made you feel a bit better then it's done what it's supposed to do and yeah. pass it on to somebody else so it can do that for them yeah, as well definitely and we'll see you next time bye, bye.